Hello, this is Bob Gray Sr. and welcome to Ministry Moments. And every uh, Friday, Lord willing, at three o'clock Central Time, we'll come to you <coughs> with the uh, Ministry Moments for that week. Um, also, we've we've updated uh, a lot of our internal workings on this thing, so it should be faster, and it should be easier access. We're hoping it is anyway. But uh, anyway, we're glad you joined us. Ministry Moments every Friday at uh, 3 o'clock Central Time. You join us and uh, bring pen and paper. And it's not just for pastors. This is for everybody. You ought to be involved in a ministry. And uh, God has something for you to do. Uh, everybody's an assistant. Jesus is, is the number one. Jesus is the head of the local church. And we are just working for him. I didn't have the kind of music I wanted. I had the kind that Jesus wanted. I didn't have the kind of standards I wanted. I got the kind of standards that Jesus wanted. I didn't have to check to see what the lay of the land was uh, religiously around the country, especially independent Baptist circles. You never had to worry about it, did you? You, just, you knew it was going to be solid. And you, because it said independent fundamental Baptist, you just knew it was going to be solid, but not, not that way anymore. And so today I want to talk to you about a very, very important uh, subject and something that I've noticed that made a difference in uh, Les Roloff, his ministry. It made a difference in Lee Robertson, his ministry. It made a difference in B.R. Lakin, in his ministry. It made a difference in uh, John Rice, in his ministry. It made a difference in Jack Hiles, in his ministry. Because the topic I'm going to cover today is, is really going to get to the heart of this thing of why we're losing our country. We're losing our country because of the, a lack of this very topic that I'm going to talk to you about today. I've, I've watched the, the great preachers, and I've, oh, God has been so gracious to me uh, to preach with them, preach for them, get to know them, and uh, just uh, marvelous men of God of the past. But that doesn't mean God didn't die when Lee Robertson died. God didn't die when Jack Hiles died. And God doesn't love Lester Olaf more than he does you. And God doesn't love uh, Bill Rice more than he does you or John Rice. Now, he loves me more than you, but that really has nothing to do with it. But so get your pen out. Write some things down. Welcome to Ministry Moments every Friday, 3 o'clock Central Time, Facebook Live, and then Solve Church Problems YouTube and uh, Ministry Moments YouTube. You can go there and subscribe, and you'll be glad that you did. So let me talk to you about here's, here's this quality. Uh, you've, you've heard uh, athletes talk about that guy has the X factor. Uh, that guy has the it factor. And you hear that a lot about people who succeed and are very successful in whatever field that they're in. It was just something different about them. Well, I'm telling you, there was something different about Lee Robertson. There was something different about Jack Hiles and Lester Roloff, something different about, not, not, not that they were odd uh, at all, but because of what I'm going to share with you today, share. That sounds like a liberal term, doesn't it? I'm going to preach at you. But get your pen out right there. I'm going to talk to you about motivation. About motivation. <clears throat> when your back's against the wall, it's going to be you and God. When things are really, I mean, th th things are really going uh, not the right way in your eyes, uh, it's going to be you and God. And the truth is, I always felt I was at my best when my back was against the wall, and it was God and me. I always felt that way. And so I didn't mind taking a stand and sticking my neck out. I wished our politicians would. I wish our Republicans who, uh, who are Republican in name only, and uh, I'm now going to centralize government uh, uh, way of practicing their politics. And that's just totally wrong. And now we got riots in the streets. We got crazy people tearing down statues and so on. And uh, you, you can tear all those down. You ought to, but you can't tear down the fabric of this country. Uh, now, here's what I want, I want to talk to you about, because unless we get our men of God motivated, unless we get our assistant pastors motivated, unless we get our Sunday school teachers motivated, unless we get our bus workers motivated, if we need, we need to get our ushers motivated, if you, you sing in a choir, you need to be motivated. So I'm going to talk to you about this matter of motivation, all right? Now, there's two types of mo motivation. One, intrinsic, that is internal. Two, extrinsic, 
that's external. So there's two types of motivation, that which is intrinsic or comes from the inside out, that which is extrinsic, which comes from the outside in. That's what gives stability to a society. It gives stability to a, a church. So two types of motivation. Now with that in mind, let me give you 65 points, 35 sub points, three jokes and two tear jerking illustrations. There we go, number one. Unprofitable servants do only what is required. Luke 17, 10, they only do what is required. Let me say again, unprofitable servants only do what is required. It's a lack of character. It's a lack of discipline. But worse than that, it's, it's a lack of, of, the, of an inward motivation. You could need to be driven from the inside out, not the outside in. Now, we need the outside, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But you don't do just what's required of you. The great bus captains I've seen, they, we would say, oh, look, you got to visit your route for one hour. They'd go two hours. <laughs> it's the people who always went the extra mile that reap the benefits of it. All right? So I said there's two types of motivation, intrinsic and extrinsic, internal, external. Number one, I said the improbable servant does only what is asked of him to do. Uh, number two, first milers are are the ones who are, uh, I'm going to say not profitable, but they're, they're not happy. First milers are not happy. First milers are discontent. First milers look over and say, well, how come he's not doing more? First milers have, have their eye on the wrong prize. So I said, number one, unprofitable servants do only what is required. Number two, first milers are uh, it's external motivation on them, but they're not happy. They do just what's required of them. I remember one of the house said one time, he said, if you can get a bus worker to go more than seven years as a bus minister, you really got yourself a dandy. Uh, and the reason that they had such great bus captains in Hammond, and we had a long view Baptist temple, is because they were second milers. Number one, unprofitable servants do only what's required. Number two, uh, first milers do uh, what is what they're told to do, and they're unhappy. They're dissatisfied. Number three, second milers are internally motivated. Now, the first milers are externally motivated. You better visit one hour. You can't have that bus route. That's that's external. No, we need that. I'm not saying we don't need that. But I'm saying all, somebody ought to mature and realize, now I've got to take this on myself. Uh, this, this is my bus route. These are my bus youngins. I've got to look out for them. I've got to, I've got to win some more. Now, we're losing our nation because we lost our motivation. We've got internal motivation, but not external motivation. Now, say quickly, number four, second milers have a sense of fulfillment that, that the first milers don't have. Second milers have a sense of fulfillment. Why? It, the burden's on their shoulders. They've got to do it, and they're going to do it. So they are the ones that are satisfied with their labor because they went beyond what was required of them. And so now, Brother Howes used to preach a sermon, the second mile. He called it the happy mile, the happy mile. The Jew was supposed to go one mile. It was the law. The Roman soldier had his 100-pound backpack that he was carrying, but he could stop any Jew. And tell that Jew, you pick up that pack and carry it. It was the law. He had to. But Jesus come along and said, told his people, said, I'd like for you to be second milers. And can you imagine a Jew witnessing to all those Roman soldiers for one mile? And he, he, he'd be glad to get rid of it. Okay, you did what? Get out of here. You did. But Jesus said, why don't some of you, why don't you go the second mile? And, uh, <laughs> and that way you get a chance to testify and tell of me. All right. So I said, uh, intrinsic, extrinsic, two types of motivation. One, the unprofitable servant does only what's required of him. Number two, first milers have external pressure on them to get it done. And uh, they, they, look, they, don't, they don't look beyond that. And they're not happy. Uh, if I, if I, this guy at work, you know, well, I've got one more hour to go, two more hours to go. Miserable. They're not laboring for the sake of laboring as a second miler. They're just waiting for that clock to tick, four o'clock, and we're getting out of here. Next, second milers are internally motivated. Number, number four, second milers have a sense of fulfillment, a sense of accomplishment. Next, both mo motivations are needed. Let me say again, both motivations, you need that, you need the bus director. You need the Sunday school superintendent. You need the bus captain. 
you need the pastor. You need the choir leader. You need the head of the ushers. Everything in life, you, you, you need it. It's good for you. It's not bad because you need somebody to challenge you. Now, when you get offended by it and you get upset by it, you'll never build anything for God. I remember sitting in the, the old, old uh, chapel at House Anderson College and uh, Dr. Rice came out and uh, Dr. Rice uh, uh, said, how many preach boys we got here? Oh, of course, we all shot our hand up. He said, I see. And he looked out over his glasses. You know, he had that, his eyes were fixed. He had no peripheral vision. And I was sitting on the front row and I had one of those wild sport coats that CW Fist still wears. And I'm sitting there on the front row. And he said, oh, I see, preach boys. He said, that's good. He said, how many of you preach boys read your Bible through in, in one year? Well, I came from American Baptist. I never heard of such a thing. Read your Bible through in one Nobody ever challenged us. We just read our quarterlies and that was it. I thought, oh my goodness. I couldn't raise my hand being honest about it. Well, he looked down at me on the front row. He said, you, you are the, on the front row, the funny coat. <laughs> he said, I wouldn't walk across the street to hear you lead the silent prayer, son, if you haven't read the Bible through in one year. Now, I didn't get mad about that. I didn't get mad about it at all. Here was a, a giant of the faith is challenging me to read the Bible through. I took it as a challenge. So I didn't get mad at him. I didn't get, well, look what Brother House did. And, and let him embarrass me in front of him. No, I, I made up my mind. And I, and I said to him, I said, if you come back here next year, see if I read that Bible through in one year. The motivation, the external is needed. It needs to feed the internal so that you can go beyond the external requirements. I hope you got that. Now, both motivations are needed. We need the bus director and the bus captain and the bus workers. We've got to have a head. We've got, we've got, we don't have a monster here. We've got to have a head. This is the difference between workers and laborers. He, in Matthew chapter 10, 38, 39, he said, pray to the Lord of the harvest for laborers. He didn't say pray for workers. Workers work seven to three, eight to five, or whatever the hours are. And that's it, buddy. They punch it out and they're getting out of there. That's a worker. He said, I don't want workers. I want laborers. Well, what's a laborer? That's 24 7. 24 7. You say, Well, I'm a bus captain, but I work a job. You work that job so that you can have that bus route. God's given you an opportunity to do something for God, and you need to do it for God. Uh, but you don't work for the man. The scripture is very clear about that. You're working for God. Now you need that job. You need that because you got, you need tithes and offerings. We got to have that. But also you have to understand your ministry is number one and that you need to be driven from the inside out with the outside in helping you and challenging you. All right. Now, next we are to pray to the Lord of the harvest for laborers, not workers. That's what he said. In verse 38, 39 he said, you pray now. You pray the Lord of the harvest. Now, like begets like. If you're not laboring, you can beg all day long for God to send laborers. He's not going to send them. Like begets like. Why should he send laborers to do what you're not doing? Now, if you're a laborer, you have every right to say, Holy Spirit of God, send us more laborers. Our country's at stake. Our cities are at stake. Our churches, there's too, too much lackadaisical attitude about the local church that you're a member. You, you've got to get off of that. You've got to get with it. Got to get the bus ministries going again. Get fired up about sowing and get fired up about baptizing every week. Get fired up about building those Sunday school classes. Next, uh, like begets like. Like begets like. So if you are a worker and pray for a laborer, you're going to get a worker. If you are a laborer and pray for a laborer, God will give you a laborer. That's the way it works. I watched it at Longview Baptist Temple. I watched God bring people. Why? Because we were beating the bushes and doing everything we could with what we had to keep everybody out of hell that we could. Baptizing every week. It was exciting to see that auditorium floor full Thursday night with all the, all, I took a picture once a year and uh, told our, our people to put it in their New Testament praying that, 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 that soul winning will stay alive. Next, pressure, don't, don't miss this now, pressure is a good thing. Pressure is a good thing. I press toward my, that's what Paul said. So pressure is a good thing. You say, I don't believe that. All right. Blood pressure. Let's talk about that for a minute. You think that's good for you? Every time I go to the dentist or the doctor, the first thing they do is take blood pressure. I was very fortunate last week it was 127 over 70. That's not bad for an old man. 
But that blood pressure, they're going to take that first before they go beyond, beyond that. Water pressure. <laughs> Try taking a shower without it. I could go on and on. Pressure is a good thing. Pressure is not a bad thing. And you who are, who are oh, you're disparaging the, uh, your church because you don't want, I don't want to be like the old timers. I don't want to, now, if you were like the old timers, you'd have to go soul winning. If you were like the old timers, you'd have to have baptism every week. If you were like the old timers, you'd have to fill that building up. If you're, if you're like the old timers, you don't want to be like them, so you disparage them. Your PTSD syndrome, your uh, poor uh, apologizing. I do not see Joshua going on an apology tour about Moses. I don't see that at all. And you quit. You need to quit apologizing. You need to apologize for yourself. But we've got to get back to this matter of motivation. Motivation is a good thing. Motivation is not a bad thing. So let, let's review. You want two, two types of motivation, internal, external. I said the unprofitable servant does only what's required of him. That's all he does. He's not going beyond that. I said the first uh, miler is unhappy. He's not satisfied. He, he, he just looks for the time for him to quit. Next, second milers are internally motivated. Second milers, next, have a sense of fulfillment. For five, both motivations are needed. You've got to have uh, a leader. You've got to have, if you have followers, you've got to have a leader. And so you need somebody that raises that bar. See, here, look, watch this. If the pastor jumps 10 feet, the church members are going to jump five. If the pastor jumps five feet, the people are going to jump two and a half. It's just the way that it is. So you've got to be the second miler if you're going to be a leader. We've got to get back to being motivated to win souls, baptize converts, build science school classes, start those buses up, crank those buses, get there. Instead of selling them, try buying some and get back after it. You, you got out because the gas was high. Now the gas is low. Get back in there. Uh, then this is the difference between workers and laborers. Workers are externally motivated. Laborers are internally motivated. Uh, like begets like. You pray the Lord of the harvest for what? For workers? No. You pray for laborers. And then pressure is a good thing. Pressure is a good thing. You need pressure. Our nation, tear down the statues all you want to, but you can't tear down the heritage. Great leaders of our nation. And we ought to, the, the help that America needs is not as much from the White House as it is God's house. Thank God for the White House. Thank God for strong presidential leadership. Thank God that uh, and Muslims say, I don't like Trump tweeting. I think, first of all, I think he likes it. And I think that's fine. But somebody's got to challenge this crazy system, this liberalism. Uh, they're going to get away with fracking. You know what that's going to do to our economy? They don't care about the economy. They're hoping these cities will burn down so that, uh, that they can get control over a minority of people. This matter of identity politics is not going to work. And by the way, Pastor, it's not going to work for you. You know, you want that that white executive, that uh, that uh, that iPhone and the latest of everything. You want that highfalutin guy. But the Bible says, "Call the poor, the halt, the blind, the lame." I think if we get back to reaching. There's more of them than there are mayors. There's more of these poor people around than there are councilmen or presidents of a bank. So I think we need to be motivated. Motivation, very, very important. And I hope that you'll motivate yourself and then not get angry when somebody else is on the outside pushing you with the pressure that's needed because I think it's good for you. Well, God bless you. Have a great weekend, soul winning. Get the gospel to as many people as you can and get them to church. And let's start baptizing every week and let's get the job done. God bless you. Have a great weekend.